Today we're going to learn how earthquakes change the moment of inertia and angular velocity of the Earth. Earthquakes have long been a source of controversy and mystery to both scientists and to the people they affect. To understand the way earthquakes directly influence the Earth's moment of inertia and angular velocity, you must first understand how the Earth works. You know the Earth is rotating, but do you know why? The Earth spins in its counterclockwise direction because it was formed in an accretion disk in the solar nebular. It collapsed down from the mutual gravity and needed to conserve its angular momentum. The Earth continued to spin because of inertia. Without any unbalanced forces acting on the Earth, the inertia of the Sun and planets have kept it spinning for nearly 5 billion years. Knowing how the Earth was formed and why it rotates is vital in understanding the significant earthquakes play in everyday life. Earthquakes have long been associated with ancient myths and have been theorized to be pockets of errors in the Earth's crust. It is not until scientists began looking at seismic waves that they started to understand the origins of earthquakes. In 78 to 140 AD, an inventor, Yang Heng, created an ancient Chinese seismograph in an effort to detect earthquakes and their direction. Hing made an urn-like structure with a central pendulum carefully balanced in its center. It was made of copper and had eight dragon heads on the surface pointing in eight directions, each one with a bronze ball in its mouth. When an earthquake occurred, it would cause the pendulum to lose its balance and activate a lever within the urn, which would then release a bronze ball into the mouth to one of the dragons. When it fell from the dragon's mouth and landed in the toad's mouth below, it would make a ting sound and alert Hing to the tremor. In 138 AD, the urn-like seismograph released a ball and detected an earthquake that happened 1,000 kilometers away in present-day western Kangshu province. When a great earthquake in 1906 struck San Francisco, Harry Reid hypothesized that quakes were the result of a buildup of pressure along faults. It wasn't until space travel that NASA began to see the connection earthquakes had on the rotational velocity of the Earth. Scientists discovered that these slight deviations in the Earth's acceleration could affect whether a space shuttle lands on the moon or misses it entirely. To prove that earthquakes changed the moment of inertia of the Earth, which in turn alters its angular velocity, thus shortening the length of an Earth day, preliminary calculations must first be done. The Earth is considered to be an oblate spheroid, which means that the Earth is slightly distorted. The rotational momentum of the Earth forces the matter to bunch up in the middle of the equator. When studying earthquakes, the location of them as it pertains to the equator of the pole is vital in determining its effect on the Earth's rotational velocity. Take for example, a spinning ice skater. When her arms are out perpendicular to her body, her rotational speed is less than if her arms were pulled in towards her body. This is the same when it comes to the location of an earthquake. Earthquakes that happen at the equator redistribute the Earth's mass and shortens its radius which increases its rotational velocity. A scaled down experiment of two Earth-like spheres with a displaced equal mass, one at the equator and the other at the poles, rolling down a ramp will meet at the bottom of the ramp at different speeds in different times. This will be demonstrated using the formula for the moment of inertia for a sphere. Two-fifths times the mass of the Earth times the radius of the Earth squared will equal Earth's moment of inertia. Since the mass is equal for both Earth-like spheres, those figures will remain the same. The location of the mass will be different. One will be at the poles, giving us a larger radius, the others being at the equator, giving us a smaller radius. The result will be an increased angular velocity due to the displacement of the mass of the Earth-like spheres and their different radiuses, their moment of inertia. The moment of inertia for Earth-like sphere B 
which is on the right, is less than that of sphere A, which is on your left. Because of the decreased moment of inertia of Earth-like sphere B, its angular velocities increase, thus shortening the time in an Earth day. This experiment verifies what scientists have long theorized to be true when there is displacement of the Earth's mass due to natural disasters like that of an earthquake. This is moment of inertia experiment one. This is moment of inertia experiment two. Like an ice skater spinning with her arms out, having a larger radius will decrease her angular velocity. If the skater tucks her arms in, displacing the mass to her core and decreasing her radius, she will then decrease, increase her angular velocity. Knowing the Earth's moment of inertia is vital to our everyday life here on Earth. Earthquakes that are centered on the equator displace the Earth's mass enough to decrease the Earth's inertia. With the decreased moment of inertia, the longer the length of the day becomes. For example, the Japan earthquake in 2011 only shortened the day by 1.8 microseconds. But that difference is vital when it comes to sending a satellite rocket into space or supplies to the space station. These minute changes can send a rocket right to its target or far off to space if these variables are not properly calculated.